My name is Tori Ferguson, and today we are going to be learning about the educational giant Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet. Um, Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet was a huge impact on the lives of people with disabilities, including deafness. He established the first American school for the deaf in Hartford, Connecticut, and helped to produce the common language most deaf people um, use, known as American Sign Language, or ASL. Because of the contributions that Thomas Gallaudet had to offer to the United States, he became a hero to many deaf students and other students who were affected by other disabilities as well. His great example to teachers across the world of how to, or he is a great example to teachers across the world of how to help his students when challenges face them, as well as being a great influence on the world um, we have today. Um, Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet was born on December 10th, 1787 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but when he was born he had a lot of health issues. Um, some of those health issues were um, in the lungs, um, he wasn't able to breathe very well, frequent nightmares, nervous attacks, and a deep sense of inadequ inadequacy. Um, but throughout his life he was able to um, he was able to take care of those things and in 1805 he graduated from Yale and became a law assistant as well as a tutor but shortly stopped because um, he had health issues arise. Instead of becoming a law assistant or a tutor he decided that he would be a traveling salesman in Kentucky and Ohio and while he was traveling between these two states he um, noticed that most of the people in the area were pretty poor and that they couldn't afford to send their children to school, um, let alone afford the things that he was selling. So he decided instead that he would teach the children history, geography, and verses from the Bible. And as he was teaching these children, he decided that he wanted to, um, he wanted to become a preacher. And so he went to a theological seminar and two years later became a licensed preacher. And after becoming a preacher, he was offered a position as a minister, but was told that he would be the only minister in the area. And because of his health issues, he turned down the offer and became a traveling preacher instead, which allowed him to go back to that er or back to those areas and teach the children that he was currently teaching. Um, one of the one day when he was with his family, um, he noticed a little girl. Her name was Alice Cogswell. She was nine years old and was deaf. He couldn't communicate with her at the time, but had heard from her mother um, that she lost her hearing at age two when she had spotted fever. Um, he became interested in this girl's story and about what her world was like. Um, and so he tried to educate her. He wanted to communicate with her better. And so he found a school in Europe that taught deaf children. His mother was or her mother was very worried about her traveling, though um, she didn't want she didn't want her traveling at such a young age, and especially because it was in a different country. And so he decided that something needed to be done about um, having a school for the deaf children in the United States. And so he went to Europe, and when he came back after a year in Europe. He traveled um, with Laurent Clark, who became a teacher um, at his new school. And she was also a teacher that he had formed a great friendship with in France. And so when they came back to the United States, he asked her to start teaching. And as they were getting, or started teaching um, so he could, he asked her to start teaching at his soon to be school. And so in April of 1817, his school was first called Connecticut Asylum for the Education and Instruction of Deaf and Dumb Persons, which to me would be a lot, it would be a handful for me to understand that. And so he renamed the school later to American School for the Deaf. And um, at first there were only eight students that were in the entire class. And so um, he taught those students, but it quickly grew and eventually caught the eye of President James Monroe and he decided that they needed to fund the school and so he increased it by granting a large piece of land and a three-story building for the growing school as well. Um, he con Gallaudet continued to work at the school until, 18, or until 1821 um, when he married um, one of the graduates from his school, Sophia Fowler, and they had eight children together. 
and in 1831 officially left the school and became a minister for a local jail and a retreat center for the insane. Um, but he continued to educate people on the issues of being deaf. deaf. <laughs> and in September of 1853, he passed away, or in 1851, he passed away from complications of his lung disease. Um, but his youngest son, Edward, continued his father's work and turned Columbia Institution into a college for the deaf um, with the help of President Abraham Lincoln. And later, they changed the name of the institution to Gallaudet University in honor of Thomas Gallaudet. And to me, he has made such a huge impact on the lives of everyone in the world, I think. Also, he has helped a lot of people who are deaf and a lot of people who can't communicate. To me, like not being able to communicate with people would be so hard. And so for these people to understand what it's like to be heard and what it's like to have a voice in the world, whether it be through American Sign Language or if it be through drawing or if it be through singing or anything, that would be a huge impact on me. And it is a huge impact on me. And so I'm so grateful for Thomas Gallaudet and for all the things that he was able to accomplish. And I'm so grateful that um, he was able to um, establish such an amazing opportunity for us um, in order to become teachers. He's one of the reasons that I wanted to become a teacher myself is because I had friends that were deaf and for me, it was hard to see them not speak their minds the way that they needed to. And so um, as they had interpreters come into the classes and as I um, learned some of the sign language myself, I was able to communicate with them and I could hear their voices, not verbally, but I could um, hear what they had to say. And so I'm so grateful for that and I'm so grateful for the opportunity I had to research him. And that's the end.